page 43, key of E minor. Um, as I said before, in the key of C, we learned the relative minor scale A minor. And the relative minor scale is built on the sixth degree of the major scale. Remember C? And then we had A minor. And then we had three different types of minor scales. We had the natural minor, which is the C scale starting in A minor. We had harmonic minor, which raises the seventh. And we had the melodic minor that raises the sixth and seventh go, uh, going up to the scale and coming down, we're playing natural minor. We have just played the key of G a number of exercises throughout this book and now we're going to play what is the sixth degree of G? E. We're going to play an E minor scale which uses the same notes as the G major scale. E natural minor, first line. Listen to it again. Sounds like Johnny Ringo. E harmonic minor has the raised seventh, which is D sharp. Melodic minor has the raised 6th and 7th going up, C sharp and D sharp, and coming down we're playing the natural minor. It is a good thing to go back and play scales every day. So right now you know the C major scale, the F major scale, the G major scale, and you also know the C major scale with the relative minor, A minor, which would be natural minor, harmonic minor, melodic minor, and, and also the related E minor scale to G major. So you can play E natural minor, E harmonic minor, and E melodic minor. Here is the exercise one for the rhythm accompaniment on page 43. I'll play it without a metronome. I'll just keep a steady tempo right now. One, two, three. Think of the melody, as the lowest notes, and having them ring for all the, uh, what is shown here, mostly three beats. Here we have a little different. We have a different C chord than we've played before. It's, we've been mostly this C chord and we're adding the G on top and you notice we're keeping G on top for the G diminished so we have right. um, the hardest part of this tune is in this in the first ending where you have one two three one G7 B7 
getting that smooth as when you're playing that B7 think of your fourth finger going to G and your third finger going to C I'll play that uh, sec first ending again I think this is the first time we're coming across this. We're having a first and second ending. Again, it's like a roadmap and a shortcut to writing this piece twice. Really what it is is that you go and play the first line into the second line. And if you notice, we have this bracket first ending. And at the end of the first ending, there's a double bar and a repeat sign, meaning that you go back to the beginning. When you play it the second time, we skip and not play the first ending and we go right into the second ending. So instead of writing this uh, four lines, we're able to keep this on two lines and not have this book more than 300 pages. We can keep this as a shortcut uh, to writing this music. So we're playing In exercise two, this is just a, um, an exercise to get the, the waltz feel and to try and get these chords smooth and also to try and have space between beats two and three. A waltz it many times has the short, second, and third beats. One, two, three. I'm using E chord. One, two, When I make it short, it almost automatically gets accented. So it's mm, bop, bop, mm, bop, bop. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, playing an E chord and having the chord short is a difficult thing. Uh, I know that in, in the beginning of the book, it says that you can use your right hand. That's a little tedious to keep a steady beat and continuous at a fairly uh, moderate tempo. So what I do is I take my left hand and I flatten it. It's much easier when you're fingering every note and not playing open strings to control that. But right now I'll play exercise two and with my left hand I will try and stop as much of the chord as possible so we have that feeling of long, short, short, long, short, short. One, two, three, one, two, three. First, trying to get the try and get the chords nice and smooth, and then work on the release and the stopping of the chords. Page forty-four. Take your pick. Duet. Again, pick is in the word is in the title, so this again is a good picking exercise of alternate picking. Here's part one. One. Two, three, four.
As we had in our previous duet, we have a chord preparation for part one. At the beginning, we have... And then the next measure. The next measure. slowly. These come up in our arpeggiated chords. That... Yes, that's F, C sharp, and B flat. Then F sharp and D play together while holding the F sharp. As you can see, this piece is cut in half. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 uh, measures, and then it's uh, the theme happens again. This theme of... When playing this piece, it's really nice to try and hear the chords in in these arpeggios. The first measure. What does that remind you of? That's C, F, C. So we're hearing back to C chord. Some notes, back to C chord. This is a type of a, of a G7. Then you have your C. Notes in C. Back to C chord, F, C. Next measure, we have a C chord, G7. And we have an F chord. The next chord you probably don't know yet, but it's an F, dimi F sharp diminished. C chord. We're hearing some type of a C7 there going to F. This is a sounding of a B-flat minor chord. Getting back to the C scale with an extra note. C, F, C, and it continues on just like that. That A section repeats pretty much. In the uh, any of these arpeggios, you're playing the whole chord and trying to have all the notes ring. Whenever you have that curved line over a bunch of notes, that means to hold all the notes to try and ring out through those. Actually, in this, it's two beats and actually one beat. In the, uh, in the next to the last measure, you have the C, G, B, F. And as a reminder, I'm not playing the retards because uh, I'm playing both parts and trying to keep the tempo for each so that we can, you can practice everything in tempo and then you can practice playing it with a retard, a slowing down at the end. Here's part two. Part two, the hardest part with part two at first is not playing for four measures. The not playing is not the hard part. The coming in on the end of one in the fifth measure, it takes a, a lot of concentration. Here is part two. One, two, three, four.
it feels pretty funny sitting there for four measures not playing, but it's a good practice to keep the tempo, to know where you are. When you're playing this piece with the first part, you'll see how everything fits. So practice this counting because not only playing the notes in the right spot is the important part, but also not playing notes in the right spot is an important part of music. Um, the entrance that you have on the end of one at the, um, in the fifth measure, again, we're going to practice coming in on the end with an up stroke. Uh, the syncopation that you have from B3 is three and four and, three and four and. Make sure that it's clear and that you're using three down and a three up and the and of four upstroke going into one. Here's that measure. Three, four, one. Again, you will always be planning what's coming next. So that's what practice is about. It's not like you're surprised by every note that's coming up. You know what's coming next. You're prepared. You're playing in time and musically. Make sure all the half notes are held and whole notes are held for the complete time that is stated in the music. And now practice part two. One, two, three, four. The bottom of page 45 talks about rhythm accompaniment with movable chords. Anything on the guitar that is fretted or played without open strings is movable. You take these two notes and you move them. That's movable. You play this chord. You play it here. That is immovable, not movable. You have to have everything pressed down in order to move a chord. In other words, if we know this F chord, no open strings, and we know that F is on the first string, and we're playing that as an F chord, if we move the whole form to where G is on the first string, that's a G chord, A chord, B, C. That is what we say where the root is. We always find where the root is on a movable chord. If I were to play bar F like this, I think of the lowest note as the root. That's F, A flat, B flat. If we know a minor chord, F minor, we can move it around, G minor. So on the bottom of the page, we have F major to G minor. Now it says 
What we have on the bottom of those chords are Roman numerals. Those throughout the book will tell us what fret to play these chords. If we use this F chord, that's in the first fret. G minor is in the third fret. A minor is in the fifth fret. Yes, we know this A minor, but we're going to use the same movable chord form to the fifth fret for A minor. And where would A flat minor be? A fret below it. Where would F be here? Where would F sharp be? Or G flat. So I will now play this exercise. One, two, three, four. A minor, same form, same form. Now we play the G flat. We played a number of different chords with just two different forms. The major form that we know and the minor form. So it's, it's really uh, one way you can look at this. If you know a movable chord form, you know F, you know F sharp G, G sharp A, B flat, B, C, all the way up. What you need to also know is how to spell the chords after a while. But these forms will help you get around the instrument and play in different keys. As long as you know where the root is, you can move these forms around. From this point on, all the chord forms that we're going to be looking at are going to be movable. Page 46, we're going to talk and play the chromatic scale. Chromatic scale is like looking at the piano and playing one note after each other. C, C sharp, black note, D, D sharp, E, F. Uh, and we're going to include the whole first position. Not even looking at the music. The chromatic scale consists of all half steps. So if we're going to E, we're going to go open to the next fret, up to the next fret, G is the next fret, G sharp. After G sharp is the open string A. A sharp or B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, a flat or G sharp, A, B flat. This is where we don't go to the fourth fret. For the, uh, we go to B open, C, D, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and we're going to slide up to A. I will play this as I and as I did with a few other exercises. I will just play this once so you get. Uh, the idea of how to play this, and then you can practice this with repeats. One, two, three. It's a clever exercise, the way uh, Bill wrote the rhythm so that you always end on one with a new string. Whenever you hit two and three, four, fifth string, fourth string, third, second, first, one. This is another scale that you can add to your repertoire of scales that you can practice slowly, whether you want to do eighth notes repeated, or, or uh, triplets, or just steady. The more scales you play, the more you know your instrument, the fretboard, and the, the better facility you have, and the better time that you have when you play it with a metronome. 
And now we will start with some speed studies. Anything that you practice slowly and trying to get at a faster tempo can be a speed study. You could do any of your scales as technique or speed studies. I guess I would rather call them technique studies. We have three patterns here with uh, three of the major scales that you have learned. I'll play the first one right now. One, two, three, four. Again, I'm playing it slowly so that you see the value in playing it legato and slowly and then bringing it up very gradually. And so forth. Here's pattern two. Key of G. One, two, three, four. Pattern three, key of F. Remember, Bs are flatted. One, two, three, four. Also practice these interchangeably in different keys. If you look at the first pattern, we're doing C, C, D, E, C. Well, in the scale, that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two. So that's in C. You could play this in G as. G A. If you need to write it out, you can, but it's good to figure out what the degrees of the scale these are on. Pattern two. One, three, two, one, two. I could do that in the key of C. Pattern three, this is going up the scale in thirds. I could do this in C. I could do this in G. After a while, you won't have to look at the music. Even if you just take 
two measures. And then do it in F. Key of G. And so forth. We've played C major scale and the relative minor A minor with natural harmonic and melodic minor. We've played G major scale and the relative minor E minor with E natural minor, E harmonic minor, E melodic minor. And now we have, we know the F major scale, so what is the relative minor? D minor. So we're going to play D natural minor, D harmonic minor, and D melodic minor. Here is D natural minor. I will play th the scale once for you to hear, and then you can practice it yourself with the repeat. Again. Harmonic minor has a C sharp, and you, after a while you're going to be hopefully recognizing these scales not just by sight, but by the way they sound. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Melodic minor. Again, going up, raise six and seven, B natural and C sharp. Uh, and coming down, we're playing C natural and B flat. You notice at the end of that, we're, we last measures were coming down. C, D, C, B flat, A, G. And then since we're going back up to the scale, we're, we're playing the A, B natural, C sharp, D. It sounds, it's really to, it's a really a pull into that, the octave going up. So that scale again is. that C-sharp. Here's some more chords. Uh, as, you have your, as you have already uh, been told, we're going to play all movable chords from now on. The, I think the only chord that you haven't gone over in this exercise, exercise one, is the C augmented chord. And that is, if you play the F chord, not that the F that you have listed right in front of you, but just the first four strings, and you moved it down one string, to, that means lower one string, instead of one, two, three, four, we're gonna do two, three, four, five, different sound, that's your C augmented chord. And from now on, we're gonna start talking where the roots are. The augmented chord, the root on this chord, if you're calling it C, can be your lowest note or your top note. I'll go back to this uh, the root of the augmented chord in a minute. These uh, four other chords that we're playing, F chord, we're going to say that the root is the first string, right? F. The B flat chord that you've played before, the root is first finger, fifth string. If this is B-flat, this is C. This is D. F7. If I have a choice between root of sixth string or first string, since the sixth string is the closest to me, I'll say the root is the sixth string. F7. And C7. The root you can have either on the second string or the fifth string. To me, the fifth string's closer to me looking at, I'm going to say the fifth string. 
So it's F, B flat, F7, C7, C augmented. Again, um, talking about the augmented chord, augmented can be either written C augmented, written out augmented, C aug, A-U-G, or C with a plus. And how do we get the augmented chord? It's a really a major chord with a sharp five. If we have a C chord, if we sharp the G, we have C augmented, the fifth degree. Just one footnote about the C augmented chord. You will find out, and we will talk about this later, that any of the notes, the way the chord is constructed, any of the notes can be the root of the chord. It could be a C augmented chord, an E augmented chord, a G sharp or A flat augmented chord, and we're back to C. But we'll cover that another time. Here's exercise one. I will use the repeats. One, two, three, four. Repeat. Augmented. One, two, three. The Roman numerals are now import really important to look at because they will force us to play certain chords in certain places so that we're not going to be always using the same form. Like I said, there are many forms to, and places to play chords, so every time we learn a new form, we're going to be actually told where to play it so that we're using that form. Now, exercise two really is the same exercise, only up a whole step. So we're going to play this. If we play this F chord in the first fret, the G chord is going to be in the third fret. No, we're not going to be playing this G. We're going to be playing this. So the first four measures of exercise one, just quickly. Second exercise, everything's in the same forms. Okay? Here's exercise two. One, two, three. Three, four. Here is exactly what it is named, an endurance etude. Shall we call it the marathon of etudes that we've played so far? This uh, etude is for picking and also for strengthening the fourth finger. We're going to keep our fourth finger on G throughout this whole piece. Since uh, this etude starts moderate, or moderato, meaning moderate tempo, and then in the second page we have that it is um, slowly retarding, poco retardando, and then we go to a moderately slow tempo. I am not going to play it with a metronome, but I will work at keeping a steady tempo throughout till, the, till I'm told to slow down and to actually, at the ending, it gets slower and slower. Picking etude number three, endurance etude. I will do all the repeats, which is actually the first four measures, and then it's on. One, two, three.
This marks the end of this lesson. We started this lesson back on page 42. And let's review a couple of things. Uh, we went to, uh, we had an exercise of 16th notes and then uh, dotted eighth note to a 16th note and we counted them. One note with this I would like to say, um, in the book we have the counting of one uh and a, uh, two uh and a, uh, three uh and a. Uh. Many people count this as one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a. Uh. You might find that easier to say. From 16th notes, we went to dotted eighth, 16th, and also played that as swing, which would have the triplet feel. Remember, this is, that's the 16th, dotted eighth, 16th. The swing feel is the triplet. From there on, we went over the relative minor to the G major scale, E minor, with the natural, harmonic, and E melodic minor. More chords on page 43. Uh, picking duet on 44. Rhythm, rhythm accompaniment with movable chord forms. Talking about that. Page 46, we had a speed study. Again, we did went back to relative minor scale to now the F major scale, D minor. We learned some more rhythm, movable chords, especially the augmented chord, and then we did this picking etude. And I have to say that uh, this is really a cross-section of what we should be practicing all the time. We have technique studies, we have scale studies, we have chord and harmony studies, we have rhythmic studies, and we have uh, duets, and we have theoretical studies, meaning the uh, uh, relative minor. You may want to, at times, go back and use these categories in practicing review. Pick a scale study, pick a technique study, you know, our picking. <laughs> Uh, pick a uh, theoretical study, meaning the melodic, harmonic, and natural minor, and uh, pick a duet to play and practice. It's always good to go back and review and see if you could just read through the beginning of the book without really, let's say, practicing it. See what you can recognize. 